What about Mike Tomlin? Boy, I can't believe we're talking about this again. But the Steelers went into the playoffs, and Tomlin did get another winning season in a row. But Pittsburgh got bounced in the playoffs for a seventh time without winning in it. I mean, it's kind of wild how long it's been for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I have the facts right here in front of me. Haven't won a playoff game since 2016 divisional round at Kansas City. Seven-season drought without a playoff win is the longest by Pittsburgh since 1970. Now, the Steelers used to be, as you folks don't maybe remember, they used to be down and out and downtrodden up until the point where Franco Harris plucked the ball off a shoot-up. Steelers are 0-4 in the playoffs since 2017. They've allowed 41.5 points per game. That's a minus 48-point differential and minus 8 turnover differential. That ranks dead last in the NFL since 2017. Over their last five playoff games, it's even been worse, a minus 68-point differential. The only one that got was really close is the one that cuts deepest, a divisional round game against Blake Bortles and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Remember that one? Where they couldn't stop him on defense. Blake Bortles. 45 to 42. Hey, and brother, Blake almost beat your Patriots the next week. He did. We all thought that was going to be a given Steelers and Patriots in the AFC Championship game. A given. Stephon Gilmore. Especially because, if you remember, Blake and the the Jaguars, uh, if I'm not mistaken, beat Mike Hoskins' Bills in the wild card round in a punt fest. And it looked terrible. Very bad game. <laughs> and you're like, okay, so they're going to go into Pittsburgh and get wiped out, and they put 45 on the Steelers. So I understand. I'm, I'm reading all this out because I have been accused of being a Tomlin honk. So Tomlin and the Steelers, I thought they put a little bit of a scare in the Buffalo Bills. A lot of folks, you, you thought it wasn't even close, but it, it got there. But they fell too deep in a hole, which is, again, the Steelers – Fans saying they're not prepared. Tomlin doesn't have them prepared. And yeah, there were some moments in this season where Tomlin, I think, was a little too stubborn. Offensive coordinator with Mitch Trubisky instead of Mason Rudolph. Remember after Trubisky lost that game against the Patriots on that Thursday night? Did you ever think about putting Mason Rudolph in? No. And then he did with seconds to go in Indianapolis when the game was already done the next week. I was sitting there. I'm like, wow, we're going to put Mason Rudolph in now after Trubisky threw a terrible interception. And the Colts are like, that's twice now. That's happened to us. In Germany, Bill pulled Mac Jones after a terrible interception and handed Bailey Zappi. Not a mop, (laughs) but but this was like, you go in the game. Fake spike interception. Oh, God. One of the many reasons why Gerard Mayo is there now. But... This is what Mike Tomlin had to say today after he was asked about his contract. Last we saw Tomlin, who was exiting stage left. He was asked about his contract. Bye-bye. And this was after the loss to the Bills. He uh, made a little light of that when he started his press conference today. Good afternoon. Uh, in a little better mood today, man. Anybody got any contract <laughs> questions? You intend to be back and disregard the rumors that were floating out there. Um, you expect to get an extension this year? And, and- um, um, yes, I expect to be back, and I would imagine that those contract things are, are going to run their course, man. Um, Art and I have a really good, transparent relationship. We communicate um, continually, often. Um, I don't imagine it's going to be an issue, and I imagine it's going to get done in a, in a timely manner at the appropriate time. Um, but, you know, my mindset is to coach this football team, certainly. So, all right. The question was about an extension, which Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk came on two days ago and pointed out, historically, Tomlin has already signed one by now, that he doesn't go into final years of contracts. They always extend. Keep adding, you know, train tracks as the train's about (laughs) to be the end. I mean, I always think of Mickey Mouse's clubhouse. That's always, you know, they were always in that train and... At the end of the track, the, the train would put more track down. Yeah. <laughs> Again, 
best dad ever. <laughs> so that's what normally what they do. And right now, the question was about an extension. He didn't answer that, did he? Mm-hmm. He says, I expect to be back. Well, he's under contract this year. And that's what Florio was pointing out. He may not want to sign a contract extension. That blows Steelers. Some of the people who want Tomlin out, that blows their mind. Oh, so we're going to let him dictate terms? Yeah. Same way Cowboys fans, it blows their mind. You're going to keep Mike McCarthy? Yeah, they don't want to, they don't want to go through a coaching change. Now, the question for Tomlin is what about the quarterback and the offense? The Steelers' defense, I believe, have a lot of guys on it who understand the Steeler way, if you will, from Watt to Hayward to Fitzpatrick, just to name three. And um, Joey Porter Jr., those are, I think, that side of the ball, despite the way, you know, they started in Buffalo this weekend. I think that's good. The offense has obviously got a bunch of playmakers on it, and who's dialing it up, and who's throwing the ball? Those are the questions for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's the difference between, yeah, we're going to win another season with winning records and all that business, to we're going to win playoff games. We're going to threaten for the AFC championship. We're going to win the AFC North. We're going to beat the Ravens, who are now obviously champions of – the division and might be champions of the conference when it's all said and done in a couple Sundays. That's the difference. So Tomlin was asked about the quarterback. He said Pickett is going to be the starter, but I guess with some guardrails around it. Will, uh, can he resume his QB1 status? You know, he will, but obviously there will be competition. There are all, there's always competition in this thing. Um, we don't anoint anyone. Um, man, I'm appreciative of his efforts and where he is and excited about continuing to work with him. But certainly, um, he will be challenged from a competition perspective uh, moving forward. Um, competition brings the best out in all of us. See, now that's what a lot of Steeler fans, if I can give them voice, it, it drives them a little crazy. They've heard this for 17 years. Yeah, competition brings out the best in all of us. And these are Tomlinisms that I love but Steeler fans are growing tired of because the results do not wind up with banners and trophies. So I understand when I say this as well. Um, He doesn't ask my opinion. But my my, uh, two cents for Mike Tomlin, if I may. I don't know if he knows who George Costanza is. (laughs) Okay. Brothers don't watch Seinfeld. That's what Stuart Scott famously (laughs) told me in a commercial break. Once upon a time, when I made a Seinfeld reference going to break, everyone in the room laughed, and I felt really proud of myself. And Stuart Scott, I felt the heat coming from, (laughs) you know, from my side, from the right side, because Stuart always liked the left chair. He had tenure. He always chose the left chair. That's why I was always on camera right. So, at any rate, I felt the heat coming from there, and Stuart said to me, what was that joke? And I said, Seinfeld, brothers don't watch Seinfeld. So let me just say this. George Costanza once famously turned his life around by doing the opposite. And Jim Harbaugh turned Michigan around because he started doing the opposite. He got some guys on the staff who did the opposite of what he was thinking about or what he thought was right or what was right. Honestly, honestly, They said today in the press conference they're going to hire an offensive coordinator from outside the organization. So I don't believe the guys who are currently calling the plays are going to be the ones. Which is another reason why Dallas didn't want to fire Mike McCarthy because everybody's in the business for an offensive coordinator. The Bears just fired their whole staff on that side of the ball. The Steelers are looking for one. Name it. There's a ton of other teams that are looking for OCs when they hire a new coach. I'm sure that's the first question that Arthur Blank's going to re-ask Bill Belichick or McKay Will when they have a second interview is, who's going to be calling the plays for you, Bill? And I bet you the answer won't be Joe Judge. It better not be. Okay, (laughs) well, so what I'm saying is, I don't know, some hot shot with a billion new ideas that you would never think the Pittsburgh Steelers would ever run in a million years. 
Get that person. Try it out. Certainly, if he's not going to sign a contract extension there for another year, give it a whirl. Do the opposite. Those are my two cents for Mike. That's exactly what I would go ahead and do. I I mean, this is just going to be, uh, 2024 is going to be just lit already. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 